Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have the same example as in the previous video with one big difference that instead of having constant velocity in the upward direction, we now have a constant velocity in the downward direction. We'll change things in a few ways and we'll see in a moment how that's done. So again, we're trying to find the force required. And so here we have an applied force, the force required to allow the block to slide downward at a constant velocity. So how do we figure that out? Again, there's two key components here. The first component is we want to take all the forces, identify them, and draw them. Any forces acting on a, at a slant or at an angle, we need to find the vertical and horizontal components. Secondly, we have to realize that if there's a constant velocity, it doesn't matter if it's up or if it's down, that means there's no acceleration, acceleration equals zero, and if there's no acceleration, there's no net force, so the net force must be zero as well. So let's start out by identifying all the forces acting on the block. So first we're going to take this force and divide it into the vertical and horizontal components, like this, so we have the, the force in the y direction, the force in the x direction, and notice since this component is adjacent to the angle, if we make this into a triangle, we can see that this is going to be equal to f times the cosine of the angle theta. Again, the cosine associated with the y direction seems kind of odd, but it's because the way the problem is drawn. And then the horizontal component will then be f times the sine of theta, because it's the opposite component to the angle. We still have the force due to gravity, mg, and then we have the friction force. Now notice if there was no friction force, the object would be sliding downward, which means that the friction force must be in the opposite direction, and so therefore we have the friction force going upward, or directed upward, I should say, because the friction force doesn't go anywhere, it simply is directed in the upward direction, it's going to be equal to the normal force times mu, and it's going to be mu sub k, and then where does that normal force come from? Well, since the force, the x, direction, uh, x component of the force is pushing to the right, we have a normal force which is pushing to the left. The normal force is going to be equal but opposite to the force pushing against it. So this is going to be F times the sine of theta. And so therefore the friction force is going to be F times the sine of theta multiplied times mu sub k. Once we have identified all the forces, notice in the y direction there's three forces. There is the force in the y direction from the applied force, there's the weight, and there's the friction force. Notice these two forces are now upward or acting upward, and this force is acting downward. And again, the second big point is that since we have a constant velocity, there's therefore no acceleration, so we can write that F net which is equal to the mass times acceleration, must equal zero because the acceleration is equal to zero, which means the net force must equal zero as well. Now we're going to identify all the forces aiding the motion and all the forces opposing the motion. Since the motion is now downward, the only force that's aiding the motion is the weight. The two other forces are opposing that motion. So now we can write F net is equal to zero and so the net force will be all the forces aiding the motion, which mg would be aiding the motion. That would be mg minus all the forces opposing the motion, which is f times the cosine of theta, and the, normal, the friction force, which is f times the sine of theta times mu sub k, and all the forces added together must add up to zero. So now you realize that the equation looks a little bit different than it did last time because the direction of the friction force now will be different relative to the motion. Okay, let's move this to the right side. So we have mg equals, these become positive, f times the cosine of theta plus f times the sine of theta times mu. Since we're looking for f, we're going to turn the equation around. f times the cosine of theta plus f times the sine of theta times mu, and I should probably write mu sub k, equals mg, so I simply turn the equation around, and now factor out an f, f times the cosine of theta plus the sine of theta times mu sub k is equal to mg, and then we divide both sides by this quantity, we get f is equal to mg divided by the cosine of theta plus the sine of theta 
times mu. And now to find the numerical value, we simply plug in the values there. F equals 5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second square divided by the cosine of theta, that would be the cosine of 60 degrees, plus the sine of 60 degrees times mu, that would be mu sub k, that would be 0 0.2. And with a calculator, let's find out what that's equal to. So we have, take the sine of 60 times 0.2, add that to 0.5, and then take the inverse of that and multiply it times 49, and that gives us about 73 newtons. So F is equal to 73 newtons. Notice it's a lot less force required in this case because all we're doing is preventing it from accelerating downward and so it needs a little bit of force to keep that from happening. Where in the previous example, we're trying to push it upward and we also have to find the weight of the block in order to do that. So there you can see the difference between the two examples. On our next video, we're now going to assume we're going to be pushing it upward and it's going to have an acceleration upward and see how things change in that case. That's how it's done.